Hello everyone, my name is Luke Miller, I'm one of the systems engineer at Veeam here in Australia. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the new features in version 7 and that being the WAN acceleration um, and we're going to be using that to move our backup files off site to an Azure instance. Um, so firstly I'm just going to go through and show you how to set up our repository. Now I've already set up a VPN to my Azure instance and, um, and basically I'm able to connect to that from my backup server here in our data center. So um, there's my VBR Azure server and we're just going to populate the files in there and we're going to put this um, repository onto the D drive. There's plenty of space there. Uh, just show you some of the other options. A line in the backup files. We don't need to have any of those enabled. VPAR NFS, we're just going to leave that as the default. There are a few other options in there that you can go through, but we're just going to go through and deploy that. Now, um, there are certain parts of the video that I'm just going to speed up just so we don't have to be sitting around waiting for a long time. But we're going to we're going to just go through, and if you could just keep an eye on the times, and I'm going to talk about some of those times as well. So this one's just unpacking. You can see that speeding up. and that's the repository created so second part of the job we're going to go and add my WAN accelerator to my Azure instance now you notice that the actual server comes with an inbuilt WAN accelerator already so we're just going to go through there and add my WAN accelerator to my remote server which is my VBR Azure instance Okay, we just go through. Now, this is where we set the cache, um, and this being um, a minimum of 50 gig is, is what we recommend here. So I'm going to go with that minimum. I'm only going to be moving up some small servers today, so just to give you an idea of how the WAN accelerator works. So we'll press next, and and then we're going to whiz through this. It basically uploads that executable and installs that service on my Azure server. And we're just going to whiz that through. And there you go. That's the service being installed in the Azure instance. So next things we're going to go through and create my job. So just finish that one and we'll go through to set the new job up and and this is going to be a backup copy job and if you guys aren't aware of how the backup copy job works I'll quickly talk about that so we're gonna have a Linux server there and I'm gonna pick a Linux server from just one of my repositories I can sync this up every few hours so I've set that just to just a number of hours and I'm going over to my backup job there and I'm just gonna pick that first Linux server the server is quite small, it's only 148 meg. The next screen is where we can choose the repository, the off-site repository, and even set up our grandfather, father, son retention policy there. Just four per week and one per month. Next is the WAN, WAN accelerator. My source is my local server, my target is my remote as your server, and we're going to leave that running in the background the whole time. So we come over to the backup copy job and we're going to force a sync and you can see that server now is, is starting to load. Now, I have actually speeded this part up because of my low um, upload speed here so you can see and, and what I want you to do is just concentrate on the time that it takes to upload this one server and I'll just explain what this is doing. This is actually uploading this file to my Azure instance but what it's doing is populating the cache on both my source server and my target server so that that Linux server now uh, the blocks that con are contained in my backup file are going to be held on that cache in both sides and this is where you're going to see a massive improvement when you start to upload um, backup files with similar types of servers in so that's where's the long there and you can see now uh, it took around about 15 minutes 14 seconds okay so to prove a point what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to create uh, I'm going to go back to that job and edit the job and I'm actually going to show you um, the uh, adding some more Linux server to that particular off-site of the job. So I'll pick up all of those default values that I've put in there. Uh, we go to that backup job. I add in two, three, and four 
uh, so three more Linux servers and we just go next I'm actually going to show you how much um, data this is going to add up to just now it just needs to calculate that for a few seconds so that adds up to around about 600 megabytes so quite a big difference from before we go through we accept all the defaults and then we're going to watch this job run again so force a sync and um, we'll move over to the actual job in progress and here you go so first one first job there it runs and it finishes just under two minutes and um, then we go on to the second Linux server and that one's finished just under three and the next server there is just finished under four minutes so a, a, a massive massive difference in speed the first one taking 15 then to add another three servers th just an, an additional four minutes so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to prove a point and log into my Azure server and I'll show you those particular virtual server that those particular backup files being held up on my Azure server and if anyone's familiar with the Veeam backup um, files, you'll understand what they look like. And that's VBK for full backups and VIB for incrementals. So we'll go over to my default um, uh, repository there. And that was in the D drive. And you'll see there I've got my backups directory and my Linux files. And there you go. There's the VBK and the VIB, just like we said. And that's enough to do your restores from. So... Thanks for joining uh, and I'll see you next time.